We can't tell you how frustrating it was for us to upload our podcast when we first got started. The websites were clunky, we had data limits, and it was all so confusing. That is until we found Zencast. Zencast is an online platform built for podcasters to not only upload their podcasts, track their listeners, connect their audience, and so much more. Zencast plans have no upload or download limits, so your cost won't grow as you do. Embed their player that automatically updates to show the latest episode of your show. Zencast lets you see your podcast downloads along with your traffic website in Google Analytics. Zencast also supports multiple podcasts under one account. The best part is, if you already have a podcast on another platform, you can switch to Zencast with a one-click importer, all free of charge. So what are you waiting for? Head over to howtomakeapodcast.co slash Zencast to start saving time and money with your podcast today. This week's episode of How to Make a Podcast. My name is Nick Miller. I am joined by my best good buddy, Mr. John Bunn. John, how are you today? Nick, I'm great. This is our Sweet 16 episode. I don't know if you know or not, but it's a big deal over here in HTMAP world, How to Make a Podcast. Things are going great. Lots of uh, good stuff going on in our Facebook group over at How to Make mm-hmm. a Podcast on Facebook. Tons of new people joining in. Our biggest week, I think, since we launched was last week with all the downloads on our uh, podcast. And it's kind of great to see, you know, this is our second podcast that we're doing. You know, we have How to Film Weddings, and now we have How to Make a Podcast. And just to watch this one grow and grow quickly with all of these things that we're doing now that we've kind of learned the ropes. And so... I'm a big uh, builder guy. I love watching things grow and building them, and I never want to stop doing that no matter how old I get. So I I get so amped up just looking back at the analytics and the statistics and where everything is going. So to answer your question, I'm doing really well. What's good with you, my podcasting brother from another mother? Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, life is life is good. Life is well for us. Uh, school, in-person school started here in Kansas. I know where, where you might live, that might be kind of weird and whatever, but for us here, we feel good about it. We are okay with it. Uh, kids have to wear masks all day. Teachers have to wear masks all day, um, that kind of stuff. But both of our children are in school for the first time ever. So I have, you know, the whole day from, you know, 8, 8 a.m. until about 4 o'clock to, to work on the stuff that I need to get done. So it's uh it's No crazy. pants necessary anymore. You're just walking uh, around, no pants on, just drinking I beer know. during the day, whatever you want to do. Yeah, so um, I have a coffee bug that says might be beer, and it might be now because whatever. Who cares? It's You're not, not going anywhere, not. and you work from right. home, so it's like you don't even I have do. to bathe anymore. I mean, you really— I don't. I, I don't think I have in, in, in like uh, seven days. That's not true. And you're looking fresh. And I will say, I can tell you've been losing some weight. I'm, I'm proud of you, my friend. Looking good. Oh, thank you. And Nick. Thank you. I, in one of our groups this week, somebody said they thought my voice was yours and your voice was mine. They think that because you have the big manly beard that your voice is the deeper of the two of us and that my voice is your voice and it's weird to them. And so I just wanted to, you know, say to just to make sure people out there that are listening and don't see our faces. If you've seen our picture, the guy talking right now has no beard or cannot grow a beard. My deeper voice, even though it's not a deep voice, is on the guy that looks less manly. So just wanted to throw it out there. I needed to clear that. I'm really tired of having this really high voice. (laughs) And so... Um, that's why I grew a beard. No. <laughs> yeah. People do talk about that. Not that my voice is much higher than John's, but it is higher. I don't know. Sure. I was a tenor in choir in high school. I was a tenor. Oh, wow. Okay. So. Yeah. That's good. And there was, there was on two songs, two songs, the choir director was like, hey, you sing really high. You're singing alto on this one. So What? He, I would yeah. peg you for an alto. <laughs> yeah, I bet you would. I bet you would. Anyway, so uh, in today's podcast, we're we're kind of going back to basics a little bit. Um, in our Facebook group, we we have the whole gamut of people. We have uh, there's this one guy that I think of that he's been doing his podcast for like 10 or 12 years or something. Like he's has hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of episodes. You know, he has like multiple podcasts, but then we have people that 
have never recorded a podcast or thinking about recording a podcast. And so we wanted to kind of break it down just a little bit and actually get into how we record our podcasts. Um, we're going to talk about the equipment we use, the software that we use, um, how we do this long distance, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, as you know, if you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, we do have a video component to our podcast. Hey, hey there. I'm waving for people that aren't listening or watching the video. We're not going to get into the video stuff. Uh, we think that that's just a whole other animal. That's a whole different conversation. And so today we're just going to talk about the audio portion. But if you head over to podcastblueprint.co, you can sign up uh, to be a part of our email list there. And we will notify you when that goes on sale again. And we have a whole section about editing and talking about video and all of that kind of stuff there. So we are going to break down just how we record our podcasts today. John, where do you want to start? Well, like you said, there are people that have been doing it for a long time, people that haven't done it. We are just going to go through what we do and what, what you should be thinking about when recording your podcast. Yeah. Obviously, podcasts are in nature audio mainly, and so mm -hmm. you can start and record a podcast from your phone. I mean, you can, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, you know, when it comes to the microphones, I think we should start there. We use the Rode Podcaster microphones, and we have a link where we'll, we will link all of the gear. Um, is that right mm -hmm. on our website already? Yeah, there's yeah it's tab. how to make a podcast.co slash gear. So you go that's, there slash gear, yeah. and then it will it will take you. Um, yeah, that's what we're using are the Rode Podcaster Pro. Um, they're nice. I don't know what two twenty five for the mic. When you buy yeah. the arm and everything, it's closer to three fifty four hundred somewhere in there, mm -hmm. which we know is a lot. And but we were making money when we purchased these things. Like we started with much humbler beginnings with our How to Film Weddings podcast. Um, <laughs> John's holding up a little lapel mic uh, that we used at the very beginning that we borrowed from our wedding video businesses. We get this question a lot. What is the best microphone to use for podcasting? And John and I firmly believe that the best microphone that you can use is the one that you can afford. OK, we don't think it is worth spending six hundred dollars on a Shure SM7B, which is one of the industry standard kind of best microphones you can buy. We don't think it's worth it spending six hundred if you're having trouble making rent. OK, mm -hmm. don't don't do that. So you can if, if you don't have much money and you want to start a podcast, you can record using your earbuds that you probably got with your phone into the voice recorder app on your phone. So and those pick up uh, really good. I mean, for what it's they, worth, if they you, do. If you are in a room that, you know, in this room right now, I have bl like a blanket on the floor. I've got sound panels on the wall. The, the room is carpet and I still get a little bit of uh, bounce back from my desk. But having a room that is calm and quiet and not echoey, mm -hmm. you know, as much cloth to absorb sound as possible. You know, I know a lot of people record from their iPhone in a closet, in a coat closet, yep. in their master closet, um, on their, you know, in their bedroom, on their bed. Just like finding a place that's quiet and you can absorb a lot of the echo. Honestly, like your earbuds plugged into your phone on the voice record app. It's the cheapest way to have really good quality. There's nothing really that like you could really start that today without any money at all. And then like Nick was saying, like I'm holding up on the screen if you can see me, but we had these little lapel microphones that we borrowed from our wedding video business that were a little bit higher quality. Um, and then we had some sure microphones that were like a hundred dollar microphones. And then as no, we they were making, $60 microphones, okay, actually. $60, $60 a $20 cable to connect them. Maybe, I don't know. But then we found these and we think these road podcasters are the best for us because of a couple reasons. Number one, you don't have to buy anything after you have it to like run it through a soundboard or anything. Mm -hmm. um, we plug our microphones. I've got a cord that goes straight from my microphone all the way over into my computer and I can record and use that audio without having to go through a mixer. And is it as good as it could be? No, but it's like 95% as good as buying the next level up. And for what it's been worth, we've been able to generate nearly half a million dollars using these two microphones. So I'm not saying that it's like you can or you can't. You know, some people are like, you guys don't even have good microphones. You can't even. And it's like it's not all about the microphone. It's all about the ease of use for us. They're easy for us to record. And we'll get into like the kinds of, you know, software that we use. 
but straight out of the mic. It sounds really good. It's easy to plug into our computers and it works as a web microphone. So when we're interviewing people, they can hear us. So it's like Nick is on the web right now. We're not in the same room. So he can hear me really well with this good quality microphone. So it's professional. It works really well. And then there are the step ups like Nick was talking about with that one sure mic. But for us, this is kind of where we've landed. We like the way it looks, we like the way it feels. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's all I have to say. What else, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. And, and with that equipment, if you go to how to make a podcast.co slash gear, um, we do have different options, different price options, you know, even from buying, um, earbuds that have microphones. If you don't have some of those all the way up through the sure microphone, you know, just, just different options at various different price points. Uh, like John was saying what one of the reasons that these are great is they are USB mics, which means we can plug them directly into our computer without having to go with an audio interface. Um, if you don't know much, about recording, you don't know much about podcasting or uh, mics or anything like that. What an audio interface is, um, an XLR cable, okay, little little nerdy here for a second, an XLR cable is what you, what microphones get plugged into, okay, that's the cable that a microphone used, like a, you know, if you're, uh, you know, a musician or whatever, that cable that comes out is an XLR cable, and some microphones have an XLR input on the back but you cannot go from XLR straight into your computer. So you either need an XLR to USB, but whenever you go that way, you can't control the volume in your computer, like with what mm -hmm. your software you're recording to. So you can get an audio interface. The Scarlett 2i2 is a uh, to, yeah, 2i2, I believe, um, is, is one of the industry standard ones right now. Um, and then you can actually adjust the volume. You can do some other stuff in that one. A, no, a downfall of having a USB microphone, if you are recording with someone in studio, in person, your computer, without some third-party help that doesn't always work, cannot pick up two or multi, more than that USB microphones plugged into the same computer. Yep. So, yeah. Just, just throwing all of that out there. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it, of course. And yes. um, we're not necessarily audio technicians or audio pros. And we just wanted to find something that was easy out of the box that mm -hmm. worked well. We've had these microphones well over a year. We've recorded well over 100 episodes on them. Rarely do they give us any issues. We plug them straight into our iMacs or MacBook Pros, and it just works. And so that's what we're mm -hmm. looking for, something that is easy for us to, like we needed, you know, needed to do a new episode. We want to do a new episode. We're able to like turn our computers on and be ready to go. And so the arm and stuff that comes along with it, you can see like we have these attachments on our microphone. So like if I bump my desk or something, it's not going to, you're not going to hear it. So there's a shock mount and there's different things. So it just makes it professional and it makes it easy for good quality mm -hmm. audio because yes, like the, like Nick was saying, the best microphone you can afford, but the better the quality of audio, the more professional sounding your podcast is going to be. Mm -hmm. And when you do try to talk to sponsors, people like that, and they go to listen to your episode, if it sounds terrible, you're not going to be able to sell them on as much of a sponsorship. It's just the truth. And so people are going to come to your show for the content, but then the quality of the content will keep them there. And so that's been a big deal for us from the beginning. That's why we have really high quality video. That's why we have high quality lighting. We, you know, we're really focused on making it feel like a nice production. But if you're just getting going, a couple hundred bucks in a microphone or your iPhone, you know, something like that, you can really get really good quality audio without having mm -hmm. to go too far. And as you maybe get in 10, 15, 20 episodes and realize you really have something going, that's maybe when you might want to make that investment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then real quick before we head over to break, which we're going to do here in a second, we want to talk about software that we're using. So John and I, because we have our wedding video businesses, we use Adobe Audition um, you know, it, cause we're using Adobe products well, like Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere, you know, for our other business. So we're able to have access to it. Um, audition is with the creative cloud. It's about 50 bucks a month. So it, it's quite the investment to get that. And I'm not sure what John and I would use if we didn't already have access to that. Um, but it's nice because I plug my microphone in and it shows up, you know, I can see the waveforms as I'm talking, you know, on my computer, you know, it, it picks it up. Um, a couple of other options that you can have for free. If you are running a Mac, if you have a Mac, GarageBand comes standard on your computer. It does the same thing. 
It does the same thing. You can record your program straight into that. So you can then, um, you know, uh, record yourself and then you can actually edit as well. If you're on a Windows uh, machine, Audacity. Um, Audacity is also for Mac, but Audacity, um, you can record straight from your microphone into your computer and that those are two free options depending on Mac or PC. So, and I want to say, maybe I'm wrong. I know there's a student discount for Adobe, but I think you can get it for cheaper than $50 a month. If you, there's certain program, I, am I wrong? You, you're shaking. There are certain I don't think I even pay that there, much. There are certain programs you can get discounted like Photoshop. You can do uh, only Photoshop for like 10 bucks a month, but all the other bigger programs and audition for whatever is not one that you can get discounted without paying for, for gotcha. all of them. I looked into it. I can't it. remember yeah. I've been paying it for Adobe so long. I thought I was paying $49 a month for it, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. yeah. But I know well, that's I 50, but that's $50. including, $50. I know, but I, yeah. I thought that that was, no, I'm paying twenty nine ninety nine for the Adobe Creative Cloud. Just looked. Not sure okay. how I did it. Okay. But you might want to go on there and just tell them that you're going to, you know, tell them you're looking for the best deal for just Adobe to send them a support message. Maybe you can get it for cheaper. That's all I'm saying. 20 to 50 yeah, bucks. Yeah. For, for yeah. That. Yeah. So. But but again, there are free options out there or maybe there's an audio editing software that you like. Uh, but Audition works for us. Um, you know, we're already in the ecosystem of knowing Adobe programs and that kind of stuff. So so that's software wise what we are using. Again, our mics straight into our computer and then we have the audio file there. We have some more to talk about about this, about how we like to record our podcasts, and we will get into that right after this break. Yeah, boy. If you have a pulse, you probably hate the subject of taxes and running the bookkeeping portion of your business. But like it or not, if you want to be a successful podcaster, you are going to have to pay attention to your numbers. But don't worry, we have the answer for you, Core Financial. Our friends over at Core Financial have taken the pressure off of us so we can focus on what we love doing most, running our podcast. They take care of all of our taxes, monthly bookkeeping, financial plans, and make sure we take full advantage advantage of all of the tax benefits we qualify for. It just feels good knowing we aren't going to get a big surprise during tax season. If you are serious about building a business with your podcast, head on over to howtomakeapodcast.co slash core to see what they can do for you. So you've got everything you need for your podcast. You've recorded your audio and video. You're so excited, but wait, you don't know how to master the audio or edit the video of your podcast. We know someone who can help, the podcast editors. Picture this, you record both audio and video for your podcast. You upload it to your remote editor and a few days later your podcast is ready for you to upload and push to the world. What will you do with your extra time? Connect with sponsors? Grow your Facebook group? Start that project or even course you have dreamed of for months? The possibilities are endless. We are blown away by the podcast editors and love working with them and using their services. They can edit audio, video, or both for your podcast. Don't get stuck trying to do this on your own. Get in touch with the podcast editors today. If you'd like to save 50% off of your first project, head over to howtomakeapodcast.co slash the podcast editors. And we are back from break, and we're going to go ahead and jump into our question of the day presented by the podcast editors, how to make a podcast.co slash the podcast editors. If you want someone to take care of all of your editing and outsourcing your podcast, you can do it there, podcast editors. So John, a question that we see pop up time and time and time again is how do you record with someone if you're in a different location? You know, that works for all the time, but especially during, you know, kind of quarantines and lockdowns and social distancing and all of that, you know, recording in separate locations is <clears throat> becoming ever more popular. So how, how do we record with each other when I'm in Wichita, Kansas, and you're in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Yeah. Well, when we started, we used a free software, Google Hangouts. We use that all the time. If you just go, I think it's the hangouts.google.com. It's a free version, a free way to interact with each other. I think you just have to have a Gmail account. Maybe. I don't know. I think that's what you had to have, right, Nick? Yeah, something like that. I don't I know. think so. Yeah. And so that was a free service so you could see each other. It's limited because it's free. Um, since the pandemic, I'm sure you've heard a lot of people talking about Zoom. Um, we had switched to Zoom several months before the pandemic hit we had gotten everything ready and everything to go and so um, we bought all the little attachments for our cameras and stuff and we're just ready to go 
for this, you know, such a time as this. So we were all set up to go. So, but for what we do, we use Zoom. Nick's going to have to tell you how much it is a month. But it allows us, like right now, Nick and I are in different places. We're able to hear each other and see each other in high quality because the program allows us to. And then even more importantly, it allows us to record this call. So as a backup and a fail safe, Nick right now is recording from his computer or from Zoom and it will save to his computer this entire episode. And that has saved our butts a lot of times if something goes wrong with our computers or our cameras. And it's pretty great quality for what it is. I mean, you're getting a little bit of internet glitch every now and then. Might be a little bit, you know, like fuzzy, a tiny bit of time, you know, just uh, on the the video side of things. But Mm -hmm. Zoom, for what it's worth, you can have so many guests on from so many different places. They can get on using their phone. um, And it just gives you a really good backup. We don't use it as our main audio source. But because we're plugged in with our good cameras and our good microphones and our good lights, like we could just basically click export and have our podcast done. And so Zoom has been yeah. what we've been doing. There's a lot of other options. I'll let Nick talk about those for sure. But what else yeah. do you have to, have to add about Zoom? Another, yeah, another feature that I really like about Zoom, and I and I want to say it's like ten bucks a month, you know, something in that neighborhood, you know, that we're paying. Um, so I am recording the video file which has all of the audio in it. Everyone that's talking is recording into Zoom. But another feature that you can do whenever you pay for it is I am actually recording it where it's just John's audio and just my audio. So um, if if something happens, let's say that that my mic, something happened with mine and it didn't record into Audition, and I, I can then send that file to our editor rather than one where everything's baked in together and then he has to, that's hard to edit whenever you have both people baked in there. So that's a really cool feature uh, that I like. Again, the problem with recording online, uploading it somewhere, is you're going to get digital artifacts in it. You're going to get that robot voice, that cutout voice. It's going to happen from time to time. Um, Zencaster, which not to be confused with Zencast, which is our hosting platform. Zencaster is a totally different program. I know we get a lot of confusion and questions on that, probably rightfully so with their names, but with Zencaster, you can have people record and upload their audio straight to you. Okay. But I have heard the same, you you have the same problems sometimes with the digital artifacts and and going online and that sort of thing. So what John and I highly recommend, yes, John. Well, go ahead and I've got, I've, I've got some of the pricing pulled up just so you guys can, can know it. Okay. Okay. Again, the problem with recording via Zoom or Zencaster or some other online program is going to be the online glitches. So we highly recommend that ha- that you have everyone record locally in their house, wherever they are, and plan on using that one and only use the online services as backups. Mm-hmm. Again, we have used our Zoom <coughs> audio before because something has happened and we needed it as a backup, but we do not prefer it because the audio quality is not as good. It still sounds great and it's still, it's very passable, but we recommend having someone record locally. So if you're recording with a guest and they don't have anything, say, okay, at least do record it on your phone and get me the file, Mm -hmm. you know, record it. uh, Something like that um, will, will make stuff easier for you. Okay. I want to talk about that here in one sec. I want to circle back real fast on the Zencaster side of things. Right now they have a hobbyist package, which is free, which you can have unlimited guests and record times. You can record an MP3. Um, and so like you, it's an online service, like Nick was saying, where you can just each person records and then it gives you files. Um, there's a $20 a month uh, plan that gives you recording and and higher 16-bit waveforms, different things like that. Um, The Zoom plans, there is a free one for Zoom. And so that is, you can have up up to 100 participants, uh, 40-minute maximum meetings. So you'd have to have under a 40-minute podcast or you'd have to stop and start a new one. Um, And so I think the one we pay for, it says $149.90 a year. We might be on the $199 a year one, but... Regardless, around $20 a month to have that service. Um, and again, it's a great, great backup. And what uh, back to what Nick was saying about having guests record. We're lucky in the fact that most of 
um, you know, Nick and I both have the same setup. So with how to make a podcast, you know, we know what we're, we're in for here. Like when we had Carrie on the other day, he has a nice microphone. We just used his audio from Zoom. And uh, like with our wedding video podcast, if they have high quality microphones, you know, we have a link we send them saying, hey, here's some some rules. Um, but like for you, if you're trying to get a guest to record with you, um, just by simply having them open the voice memos app or the voice record app, whatever it is on their phone, and just kind of hold it while they're talking to you and also connecting, you know, through the internet or whatever, having them record that at their home, like Nick was saying, and then just texting it to you or emailing it to you, you can edit those together and it's going to sound really, I mean, really good. There's some things that could get a little hairy if you're doing them in different formats and stuff like that, but that's still a great way to mm-hmm. like get good quality audio. I mean, without going too techy on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's, that's a way to do it. And then, you know, if, if you don't want to pay for anything, you like Google meets, um, I think that's what they're, they changed it from Hangouts. I think it's Meet now, Google Meet, whatever. Um, that's that's a great way if you just want to kind of have unlimited time where you can talk to each other, you can see each other, but then have them you know record locally on their their end. Um, another thing with recording, you if you're watching the video, you see that John and I are both wearing headphones. You might not know this, but headphones are really really important. If I was not wearing these headphones, my mic would pick up everything John is saying into this microphone because it would be coming from my speakers on my computer. So Mm. uh, we have found that over-the-ear headphones um, are a little bit better in not letting noise out. Sometimes we've recorded with guests that were just using earbuds, and our voices, we could hear our voices in their recording because it was picking up you know, their mic was picking up their earbuds, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. uh, definitely uh, use headphones whenever you're recording. That is a must, must have. And then we just want to talk about editing. Whatever software that we were talking about earlier, again, we use Audition, or if you're using GarageBand or Audacity or some other program, uh, you can edit it all in there. Uh, mastering it just a little bit, you know, might want to look up some tutorials on how to do that. Uh, you know, we're, we're planning on breaking down, you know, maybe how we edit those and kind of some future stuff or some products that we're going to be releasing very soon. Um, but the, the easiest part whenever you're in different places is, uh, you can tell in the waveform, like on, on my waveform, you know, it's really thick and I'm talking a lot and then it's like quiet for like two or three minutes because that's when John's talking. So you can easily kind of figure out where that is if you have those different files, if they're separated. So John's talking, then I'm talking and just kind of line it up. We don't do much editing, like take out ums or uhs or, hey, we said something stupid unless it was something really, really stupid. And then we <laughs> might take it out unless it was really, really funny. Um, you know, so we're not we're not doing some heavy editing like that from the audio standpoint. Again, we have the 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 video that we're doing. So it's another step. But um, yeah, <coughs> that's that's what you're doing yeah. with the editing. What do you, what do you yeah. have? Nothing really else on the editing. I mean, to be honest, this episode, you know, like we're, we, we'll probably go into some more editing in some later episodes. We go a lot deeper into it on the, you know, in our course, the podcast blueprint that will be coming Definitely. back out soon. Um, this is obviously just a very, very small portion of what they can, you know, if you're listening out there um, and you're wanting to get into podcasting, that course is the complete blueprint, you know, obviously the podcast blueprint. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it really does come down to, you know, in, in recapping uh, a microphone, the best microphone that you can afford without breaking the bank, um, being mm-hmm. able to record it locally whenever you're with, you know, a guest that's not with you, um, just taking your time and learning things. You know, it, I, I was listening to a different podcast and Bill Gates was on it um, the other day and he was talking about how most adults, when they get uncomfortable or confused, they quit. And he loves to be confused because that means he doesn't know something and he wants to learn it. And, you Mm -hmm. know, I think as adults, we're just like, oh, that's confusing. I'm not good at that. Instead of just kind of leaning into it, doing a little bit more learning, investing a little bit into yourself, because once you have that knowledge, that's whenever you can start really seeing a difference in your podcast and the way that you do things. You know, there's so many different things in life that if you don't just take that time to get through the confusion, that like you were just on the other side of like a really big success. So I would encourage you, you know, if there's some portion of this that you don't understand, post about it in our Facebook group um, mm-hmm. or, you know, kind of ask there. 
you know, hit us up on Instagram at how to make a podcast to send us a message and, you know, really just kind of work on learning more and more of these things. We wanted to do this episode because we just wanted to break it down to the basics for you. Like, I mean, there's a lot more details that go in that. If you have questions, you know, you can always leave them in the comments below as well. Nick, that's all I have, my friend. Dude, I don't I don't have much else. I think that, that that's probably a wrap on this episode. Um, again, we have talked about it a lot in this one, but uh, if you want to head over to podcastblueprint.co, you can uh, you know sign up to be a part of our wait list. So as soon as we release this course again, which we're going to do in the next you know a couple of months or so, uh, you will be able you'll be notified and uh, you will be able to sign up for that there. Thank you so much for listening, John. It has been great to hang out with you again. Until next time, we will see. See ya. See you guys.